Right now on Daily Planet, eliminating bad vibrations. We'll show you a German company's ingenious ways for stopping big machinery from shaking apart buildings. Plus, no pressure here. We'll head to a skateboard lab in San Diego set up to make landings like this. A whole lot less painful on the feet. Speaking of being shaken up, skateboarding is one of those cool sports that unfortunately is pretty hard on you when you do it. All those slides look like great fun, but if you land the wrong way, that is trouble. Well, a California company is putting its foot down and coming to the rescue of skateboarders everywhere. In fact, they've set up the very first lab to study skate shoe technology. It's not unusual to see a skate park in California. What is unique is what's next door. The first laboratory to study how and why skateboarders get so many injuries. Just ask world champion Ryan Sheckler, who, at just 16, has a list of them. Broken my elbows a bunch of times, like uh, three times each. Uh, broken foot, sprained ankles, concussions, all from skating. So we're going to insert these special pressure insoles inside your shoes. So he and Jeremy Dieterman, a biomechanics expert, have been working together to make the sport a little safer by building better shoes. The Institute is the scientific arm of Soul Technology Inc., makers of skate shoes like Etni. Jeremy knows they can't prevent all injuries, but they can at least cushion the blow to the poor overworked foot. What we were seeing with skateboarders was that they were getting a large amount of force, impact force, being applied to their calcaneal bone or their heel bone. And this was uh, causing heel bruises. We were also seeing a lot of uh, forefoot injuries as well. Uh, a lot of the kids, because they're coming down with such a high amount of impact force and, and they're breaking almost instantaneously, they're jamming the, the tops of their foot into the toe boxes of their shoes, so that's causing a lot of toe black blackening on top of the kids' feet. And then also underneath the metatarsal heads, there's also a tremendous amount of force. Pressure sensors are put in the insoles of Ryan's shoes. That will tell Jeremy which part of his foot suffers the most impact. Then there's the force plate. Located where Ryan lands it measures the force of the landing. The information is then put together. This graph shows the pressure on Ryan's feet throughout the trick. This peak is the landing. We can see that initially in time, uh, as he's coming down, the pressure is immediately building up on the back side of his foot, being his right foot, and his left foot being his front foot. So we can see, as he's coming down, that a lot of the force is being distributed across the medial side of his back foot, across the first metatarsal heads, and also the medial side of his heel, and on his front foot in pretty much the uh, underneath the calcaneal bone. Their research has revealed just how hard the impact is, many times that of other sports. The impact of walking, for instance, is about one and a half times body weight. Running, about three times. Basketball, five to seven times but the impact of a skateboard landing can be as high as 17 times body weight. That's comparable Drop now. to a parachute landing. To make matters worse, skateboarders land on four moving wheels, which means the rider has to balance too, sometimes twisting himself in all kinds of contortions. So the researchers are interested in what the rest of the body is doing too. Ben Ho is being rigged up for a motion capture study, which will record the movement of key joints in his body. As these kids are getting older, uh, a common problem that we hear from a lot of skateboarders is uh, they're all having really bad knee arthritis and stuff like that and lower back pain. And so there's possibly down the road, there's ways that we can affect the geometry of their shoes to align them into a better position while they're skateboarding to help alleviate some of these problems. The challenge in designing skate shoes is that the soles need lots of cushioning. But skaters like close contact with the skateboard surface in order to perform their tricks. So whatever cushioning you create has to be thin. The lab came up with a solution. 
called the System G2 gel. The System G2 is an elastic polymer which has really high impact absorbing abilities. And that's sort of the magic of, of this material is that, uh, again, the thinner the better. And so this is a material that can absorb a lot of amount of force without being very thick. The gel has received high approval ratings from one tough critic, company president Pierre-André Senizaguet. He's a self-described grown-up kid and a former skateboard champ himself. Now, at age 43, he remembers those days all too well. When I wake up every morning and I feel my back is hurting, I figure, oh my God, I wish I had better skate shoes when I was younger, so I wouldn't have to feel the pain I'm, I'm feeling. Uh, so I feel like it's like a mission and, uh, for me to, to make a really, really good skate shoes. He wants the next generation of skaters to end up with fewer aches and pains and skate well into adulthood instead of burning out from injuries. It definitely makes a real difference. Uh, you notice when, like, shoes before that don't have gel, you skate in them and you, you get done skating and you're hurt. And the next day, you know, you put on a different pair of shoes, like my shoe, skate, and the pain's not there because it is so much more padded and they actually are doing pre pretty much miracles with it, so it's amazing. The researchers can never make skateboarding a safe sport. Part of its peel, after all, is the risk factor. But if shoes can help protect these daredevils, well, they never need to know.